We've covered many aspects of market noise over the past weeks, but there is a glaring gap, a major noise-related topic that we haven't yet looked at. That's the subject of trading indicators that use market noise conditions to automatically adjust their parameters, with the aim of becoming more effective. One indicator that does this is the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average. We'll take a look at this right after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average is the obvious choice to look at for this series in terms of adaptive indicators. This is because it uses the efficiency ratio that we've already looked at, and it does this to perform the adjustment of parameters to best handle noise levels that are occurring in the market. So we've looked at a number of different ways now of utilizing noise metrics. And we've looked at asset filtering, time frame filtering, and also instantaneous noise filtering. But now we begin to get a little bit more sophisticated. This time we're going to be looking at incorporating noise data and information into other trading indicators. And specifically for the purpose of enabling those indicators to adapt dynamically to the current noise conditions. So let's take a look at the specific problem that this is trying to address. Let's say that the green conceptual price action here is the meaningful price move that we're attempting to capture. And we might choose to use a moving average in order to tell us when the trend is changing. So as an example, when the price crosses the moving average in an upwards direction, we could enter a long trade. And then when it crosses the moving average in the opposite direction, that might be where we want to exit our trade. And under ideal conditions like this, that's fairly easy to do. And we can turn a fairly good profit from this kind of trade. However, in real life, there's noise to contend with. And the effect of noise is that it causes whipsaws around that moving average crossover. So although the meaningful price move is identical, the moving average suffers as a result of the whipsaws that are experienced. So what do I mean by a whipsaw? Well, if we look at the early price action here, we can see that the price crosses over the moving average just like it did before. And if we were to enter a long trade at this particular point, unfortunately, in this case, it would have been a false entry and we'd have exited the trade here. And this is what we call a whipsaw. But in this example, we don't just get one. We actually get several of these in quick succession. And it takes until here when there's a more substantial move through that moving average for us to actually gain any significant profit. Now, the effect of this is that, first of all, we made less profit than in the non-noisy idealized environment, but also we suffered a number of whipsaws on the way. So let's think about how we might handle this if we were to do it in a manual way. Well, when we had a situation like this, where there was very low levels of noise, we could actually use a much faster moving average, maybe something like this. And the effect here is that we would actually enter the trade at a more preferable price. And we'd also exit the trade at a more preferable price. So overall, we'd make more profit. However, in a more noisy environment, clearly we can't do that. We have to do the opposite. We have to have a much slower moving average. 
and we have to slow it down to the extent that the whipsaws are reduced. So because this trails the price a lot further now, those noise movements no longer cause whipsaws, and hopefully we get a much cleaner trade entry and exit. But changing a moving average like this in relation to the changes in noise in the market would be extremely onerous and would probably take far too much effort. But what if we could adjust the number of periods of the moving average automatically? And that is precisely what an adaptive indicator does. So adaptive indicators can adjust to what the nature of the market conditions are at any point in time. And importantly, this requires no manual changes to parameters. Now, there's a number of things that could be used to inform that adaptability. So, for example, volatility, the strength of the trend, and also noise. And since we're doing a series here on market noise, clearly that's the one I'm going to focus in on for my example. And so the adaptive indicator that I'm going to look at is the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average. Now, unlike the name suggests, this isn't actually a moving average at all. But I suppose the reason that Kaufman called it this is because it looks like a moving average and also you would use it in exactly the same way as you would use a moving average. And this indicator performs its adaptive adjustments based on a measure of noise, or rather the inverse of that, efficiency. And this being a Kaufman indicator, as you'd probably expect, he uses his own measure of efficiency and noise, which is called the efficiency ratio, which of course we've looked at in detail in previous episodes. So let's take a look now at how the behavior of this adaptive moving average compares with a more standard moving average. So the yellow line here represents a 50 period EMA, while the blue line represents a 50 period Kaufman adaptive moving average. So let's focus in on different parts of this chart and have a look at how that behavior differs. We're going to start here. Now, as you can see from the price action during this period of time, it is fairly choppy. It's very noisy in nature. So the efficiency will therefore be measured as being relatively low. And take a look at the Kaufman line here. Compared to the standard EMA, the Kaufman line is keeping its distance away from that price action. And that is the intention of the calculation behind this indicator. So whenever price movements are noisy, it stays away in order to avoid whipsaws. But look what happens next. You'll notice the price action heads downwards rather quickly here. And as it does that, the Kaufman indicator reacts to that and chases the price rapidly. So if we're thinking about exiting this trade based on the criteria we showed previously, then we'd actually be getting out of the trade at a more preferable price than with the standard EMA. But look what happens next. We enter this choppy phase again, where the noise to meaningful price movement increases. And look at how the Kaufman line reacts to this compared to the EMA. It actually goes very flat whereas the EMA is still chasing that price. But then everything changes as soon as the market starts to move upwards again. As soon as we get this large green bar, the Kaufman moving average suddenly kicks in and chases that price down, much more so than the EMA does. And again, if we were considering a trade exit at this point, then the Kaufman indicator would get us out at a more preferable price than the EMA again. Then let's turn our attention to this price action over here, which is considerably different. And for a sustained period of time here, the price action is much more noisy and the meaningful movements are smaller. And because the Kaufman indicator is reacting to this increased noise, again, it's keeping its distance. And although the price breaks the EMA on several occasions during this downturn, it's not until the very end that the price breaks the Kaufman line. And again, this is directly in line with what the Kaufman moving average 
is setting out to achieve. So having seen how this indicator manifests itself on a price chart, in the next episode, I'm going to move on and explain a little bit more about the calculation behind Karma so that you have a much fuller understanding of how this indicator actually operates, because it's essential to have that if you hope to use it in an effective way. And then in the following episode, I'll be looking at how we might use this in a trading context. So hopefully you found that a good introduction to this indicator. Please do remember to subscribe so that you get notified when that next episode's available. But now, until next time, trade wise, trade safe.